Hi everybody and welcome to Vape Distortion. I want to give you a little bit of an introduction into the channel and some of the videos that are going to be coming up ahead. Now we're here to talk about vape industry issues, uh, vape advocacy to be precise. Now when I'm talking about vaping I'm not talking about the herbs or the hookahs or any of the combustible types. There are other channels for that, there's nothing wrong with them, but there are other channels for that. For us, we're specifically going to be talking about e-liquid type vapes. In other words, the ones that use the e-liquids. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There are ants groups, and for those who don't know, ants are the anti-nicotine zealots who want smoking and vaping banned. And actually, a lot of them don't really want the smoking banned. It's sort of a front, and there's reason for that behind the money. We'll get into that as we go through the series. But a lot of the people, for instance, government, and this is so frustrating. They keep trying to push to the public and in legislation. We have to protect the kids. Teens are getting to the... We don't want them selling to underage. Guess what? The industry has not wanted to sell to underage. Yeah, there are going to be some places that do. They don't last very long. The legit industry has not sold to minors. They, that's not the market. The market for a vape is a smoker who doesn't want to smoke anymore. They may have tried everything else and it hasn't worked. That's why people end up usually vaping. Um, about 99.9% .9 of vapors are ex-smokers or might be current smokers cutting down, but they're smokers. It's not the kids. It's not marketed for the non-smokers. As a matter of fact, that's completely the wrong market. <laughs> Vapors are very protective because we've found how much our health has improved. We found suddenly a way to get off of tobacco. Many of us tried for years. Myself, I've gone through patches, gums, lozenges. I went through med medication, prescriptions. I went through acupuncture. I went through multiple laser surgery. I tried cold turkey. It didn't work. It just didn't work for me. I kept going back to smoking. And I smoked for about 35 years, almost pack and a half a day. And I felt like crap. I didn't really want to, but yeah, I was addicted. When I started vaping, I had no intention of quitting smoking. I just want, I figured if I can convince my mind to replace every fifth cigarette with vaping and hopefully it would get me by, cut down that craving, it would save me a little bit of money. That's why I started. What I hadn't expected, and I do have them somewhere on the shelf up there. I'll bring them out one day. I have the two open packs of smokes that I had with me when I got my first EVOD starter kit uh, for vaping. It was a kit, the same same type of system as this. I That was in February 6th of 2014. I had two open packs of smokes with me. Like I said, I didn't plan on quitting. I just wanted to replace every couple of them, so I was hoping, yeah, maybe the vaping will cut down the cost a bit. I still have those same packs, untouched. I have not had a single cigarette or even a puff from a cigarette since my very first puff from vaping. Now, I'm lucky. Some people it takes longer. Some people are dual users. They continue to smoke, but just in a fraction of the amount that they used to, and vape. Everyone has their own ways of going better. A lot of vapors just end up quitting. Myself, I spent three months waiting for withdrawals. I figured, okay, nicotine hits. It's going to hit. It's going to hit. I had no withdrawals. I finally gave up waiting. Everybody's story is different. It's not going to be for everyone. But what I'm trying to explain is that for a smoker, we're so adamant and passionate about it is because we have felt how hard it is to give up smoking. These have not only done the job for us, it's done it for millions of smokers. And that's the scary part with the government and all these ad groups is they say, oh, we got to get rid of smoking. we got to get rid of smoking. You have one of the devices that has been the most effective 
anti-smoking conversion ever. It, the Mayo Clinic has realized how quickly patients were recovering when they switched from smoking to vaping. They encouraged the switch. In the UK, their health organizations, the UK Cancer Society, the government did years of research. A lot of them were very much anti-vaping. They figured, no, these things are dangerous. We don't know about them. Get rid of them. They did their studies. And they came to realize what most vapors know. It makes a huge difference in the health. Not just for us, but also for those around us. And that's some of the things that we'll cover in the shows. Is the dangers, like everyone saying, oh, that's poison. They're trying to kill us. They're trying to pollute us. They're trying to... That's not smoke. It doesn't have the same contents as smoke. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of studies. Government says that, oh, we don't know enough about it, not enough studies. There are hundreds and thousands of studies done showing that's not even remotely equivalent to smoke. It's completely different. The only thing is... For a lot of people, it looks like smoke, and so they equate it with the same thing. Same with the nicotine. Oh, well, the nicotine is to get you addicted, get you addictive. The nicotine level, first of all, in an e-juice, and like I said, mine don't have it. I, I do have some that have small amounts of it. Uh, I bought them because they're out of the no-nick ones for myself. Most vapors like anywhere from a 1, 3, or 6 milligram strength. Now, that's when you compare it to a cigarette which says one milligram, that's not one milligram in a cigarette versus six milligrams in a bottle. Milligrams in a bottle are a percentage. So it actually works out to a lot less. Like, for instance, if this was a six milligram nicotine, it wouldn't be six milligrams in the whole thing. It's 0 0.06 or sorry, 0 0.6 percent is nicotine of a gram so it is far less to begin with the strongest ones most people when they first start will get a small little simple device like this um, like I said these are a big improvement over the e-cigarettes that you get at the gas stations and so forth as a matter of fact a lot of the e-cigarettes and especially in the US are owned by tobacco companies they aren't effective they have a different type of delivery system they weren't they helped some people, but they weren't overly effective. So a lot of people switched these. When I started, I started on a 24 milligram. Uh, my second bottle of e-juice, I was down to an 18. Before long, I switched to a 12 and then just kept going down. And then when I got to a zero, I found it really wasn't making any difference um, whatsoever to me, one way or the other. Even now, if I have juice with Nick, I don't get the cravings and so on. The reason being is they're a completely different composition. Even the levels are so, so far below even a single cigarette that it, it doesn't, it's not the same nicotine that they're talking about. You'll hear about, oh, um, a teaspoon can kill a child. A teaspoon of nicotine can kill, kill, yeah, it can. That's when you're talking about the raw nicotine or the raw nicotine before it's fully diluted that goes into here. The nicotine in here is a reduced it's the molecular structure is smaller it's absorbed it's not inhaled it's, it doesn't need all the tars and everything and all the other crap that's in a tobacco it doesn't need that crap in other words to get into your lungs to keep that addiction going the molecules are smaller almost all of it is absorbed within the skin on inhaling but you're using such a much lower dosage these are actually lower dosage than your patches. But why are they more effective? Because of a habit. Smokers are used to something going in, something coming out. That's where the satisfaction comes and that's where these devices help convert. Now again, it looks like smoke. It's not. Hopefully Throughout the series, we might be able to convince a few of you, a lot of you, we won't be able to. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
all we want you to do is at least be a little more informed so that you have an idea of what's real, what's fake, what's the truth, what's fiction. That's what we want you to do. Then you can make up your own mind. You might not be for vaping. That's fine. You may not support it, whether you vape or not, whether your friends vape or not. You might not be supportive of it. You might just go against the grain. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you at least have proper information. At least you understand the difference. That it's not necessarily what you've been told or what you've thought is this huge, monstrous disaster waiting to happen. Do we know what all the health risks are? No. Do we say it's completely safe? No, we don't. Now, the Royal College of Physicians, and you have to understand, they are one of the most internationally renowned groups for studies. I mean, these are they reported about the dangers of tobacco and cigarettes two years before it even reached North America about those warnings. These, they, they know their stuff. Do they say it's perfectly safe? No. But one thing they have stated, and they estimate this as a fairly low level, is 95%, at least 95% safer than tobacco. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, so they're 5% as dangerous as tobacco. No, no. That's at least 95% safer. They've already admitted that. They figured that some of their estimates might possibly be high because it hasn't been long enough. These haven't been on the market long enough to know. They've been on less than a decade. So do we have long ter- do we know the long-term effects? No. But guess what? There, there are professionals out there uh, who actually do very, very intense studies beyond normal scopes. And what happens is they also let the industry know, by the way, we found a danger in this mixture. This is something to watch for. Industry will usually gather together. Some will change it. They'll examine it. And they'll make changes. They try and improve it. That's been done on our own. A company that does it, a company that says, oh, we don't care what's in it. We're, we, we're fine. Our people will buy it anyhow. They don't last very long. Yes, there are a lot of homemade ones, a lot of people making their own type thing and passing out to friends. That's not really what the vape industry is about. You're not going to be able to really prevent somebody from doing their own thing. But for the market aspect, that is taken very seriously, even within the industry. And though the industry hasn't done the greatest job, It's hard to explain. We do care. We do pay attention to when we get negative results. And believe me, every major reviewer out there jumps on it. They slam the companies that don't pay attention. The market does go after it. So it's not like it's being ignored. That's why things have been able to progress from the cigarettes to get at the corner gas station or the convenience store into these, which are second generations, and these really aren't e-cigs anymore. These are vape devices, e-liquid vape devices, or as I call them, EVDs. This goes into a third generation vape device. There are fourth and fifth generation vape devices now. It's grown because the industry has said, we need to make it better. We need to make sure that the nicotine levels are lowered down. So how do you do that? You improve the quality of the devices. You improve the way the juices are made. You improve all the aspects of it and you continuously improve. Now, unfortunately, with the Canadian laws being passed in a lot of provinces and especially the FDA laws, that's coming to an end. If FDA if the device is, hasn't been out since 2007, nothing new is allowed out. Now they say, oh, but you can apply to it. You can get a new one. Except for one thing. They aren't telling people that only one application 
because they now consider these tobacco products, even though there's not a single bit of tobacco in it, and as a matter of fact, as I said, my own don't even have nicotine. This is supposedly a tobacco product nicotine delivery system. The batteries. There's a battery for one of the types of devices. That apparently is made of tobacco now, according to the FDA. And Canada's doing the same thing. They just don't get it. These have nothing to do with tobacco. We, we try and convince them we've been very slack about it because vapors all in all have always taken an apathetic um, approach to things that go who in their right mind would ever create a law? Why would they tax us as if it's a cigarette when th these have nothing to do with cigarettes, tobacco, or smoking, or anything like that? It's not going to happen. It can't happen here. Nobody in their right mind would ever believe it. Government did it. And now it's a case of but they're not tobacco! It doesn't make sense. So you have all the groups out there going, oh yes, big, big blow against smoking. We're putting a stop on all this vaping. They're finally being regulated. They can't sell them to our kids anymore. The kids were never the market. They were, they are not a desired part of the market. A non-vapor really is not even part of the market. There are a few non-vapors who might use it and most of them will won't bother with tobacco, they'll just do, well, even though I used to be a smoker, I like my no-nick. Even non-vapers who get into vaping, they usually go with the no-nick. The kids, it's going to happen. Does the industry like it? No, we don't want them. We don't want the kids or teens vaping. That's not what it's for. But what you have to remember is... The kids, whether it's drinking, whether it's drugs, whether it's taking the car out for a joyride. Think when you were growing up, everybody is going to try and see what they can get away with. Is the industry satisfied that, yeah, there are kids who vape? No, we really don't want kids involved. Most of the shops, even before the laws came out, put bans on age restrictions even though we weren't well when I say we I don't I'm just a vapor I don't own a shop I don't own e-liquid company or anything else I don't have any part of the industry other than I'm a vapor when I say we it's because I look at all the support I've gotten from the local shops how they've helped me um, kept me going with new devices educated me taught me and shown me how to use different devices uh, how to build coils when I need to build coils, how to mix and match the right tanks or drippers with the equipment, um, whether I go with mechanicals or not, whether I go with my old style, believe it or not, that's an old third generation uh, version as well. They've helped me so much, so I, I refer to us as we. But vapors in the vape industry really don't want the kids vaping. At the same time, we look at it realistically. They're going to do it. There's no, whether they get it from their parents or whoever else, they're going to find a way. If they don't get it, if they don't get it from a shop, because most legit shops won't get it, so they'll go to a mom and pop shop or a head shop or somebody under the table who will sell it to them, or they'll get it from their friends, brothers, cousin, older uncle, or whoever. They'll get it they'll what they mainly do these tricks now tricks are where they blow the that and do all kinds of finger things and create the o's and create little tornado spins and all that that's what they get a kick out of almost all of them are using the no nick which is something that you never hear in the studies you always hear oh uh yeah they're they're using them six times as, as much for so it's an epidemic they're using it six times more now than uh, they were for smoking Guess what? First of all, the reason the smoking levels drop so much is a lot of the kids decided, screw it, let's just vape. 
At least we can they can vape without as much damage. Is the vape industry happy? Not really. We would rather they don't. But they're going to. Drinking, they're going to. Drugs, they're going to experiment. Jory riding in the car, they're going to experiment. If nothing else, at least as a smoker for 35 years who finally managed to get off it and switch to vaping and after seeing the health difference in all honesty if they are going to be trying something I'd rather they didn't but if they are going to be trying I would much rather they try something like that than a cigarette I I don't want anyone to go through what most of us smokers have gone through all our lives where yeah you do get addicted to it you get addicted to the cigarettes it's actually not the nicotine in there that's addictive. As a matter of fact, years and years ago, if you check the tobacco reports, and there are places to check them, which we'll go through as time goes on, they actually discovered that their nicotine wasn't making their cigarettes addictive enough. It wasn't hooking people. That's why they started adding more chemicals, more chemicals, and they brought it in to make it addictive. To give it a boost. And that's where these, even the ones that do have nicotine, and again, they're a fraction, very, very smaller fraction of even a single cigarette dosage. It doesn't have the same addictive effect because it hasn't got all those extra chemicals that are boosting the addiction to it. Um, there is a great study, and we'll be covering it as well, uh, on BBC called, uh, from Horizon called, um, uh, what was it? Uh, give me a quick second here, I'll find it here. Uh, video, da -da 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 -dum. I should, I should know the title, but, uh, it was by, uh, Dr. Michael Mosley, and it was called E-Cigarettes, Miracle or Menace? And... What was interesting with that, it was a great series. And it covered both pros and cons of all the sides. But what was interesting was he was a non-smoker. Didn't have cigarettes before. Never vaped before. He took it up for a month. And they actually put him on a higher nicotine level for a month. He had to keep a steady st schedule for vaping for a month. He had trouble keeping even with that. But he did it to find out what the effects were. Throughout the whole time, they continued um, the studies throughout it. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. They continued the studies. Um, he also did interviews with a number of labs and showed the results of the actual secondhand vapor. Because everyone's talking about, oh, uh, secondhand vapor is carrying all this nicotine. First of all, even in a high dosage level, let's say an 18 milligram in an older device, you're looking at, what is it, I think it's 0.006% uh, of nicotine in there. It's barely even measurable. Um, there have been other British studies where they've compared it and measured it against smoking, vaping, and just a non-smoker exhale. And it pretty much came very close to matching a non-smoker exhale. So anyhow, this reporter took up the vaping for a month. He did a lot of studies, and there's some great interviews. You can actually see some of the effects that it has. But he was, he wasn't really, he, he wasn't anti-vaping, but he didn't believe in it. He had a lot of distrust, so that's one of the reasons why he wanted to go out and prove that, yeah, here is what it'll do to you. And now he's a huge vaping, pro-vaping supporter. He doesn't vape anymore. He didn't. He quit as soon as uh, the month was over. And even the studies showed that any tightening or anything from the effects from the um, propylene glycol or the vegetable glycerin or the flavoring or even the nicotine had completely cleared up within a day or two. No signs whatsoever. No damage. No residual effect. Did he have any cravings for nicotine? Absolutely none. It's a different 
delivery system. It doesn't have those boosts. So that's kind of some of the things. And I'd mentioned that we're going to have a website. And right now it's currently being built. But just to give you an idea of when it's ready, we'll be covering a lot of uh, advocacy uh, sections and so on. We'll be covering um, different areas. Uh, we'll be covering some of the news. There will also be a lot of sections for beginners or even politicians who aren't sure what to believe or what not to believe. We're going to try and cover as much as we can. We'll try and keep people up to date, and not just for Canada, but for the US, for the UK, for Europe, for Australia, where you can still get arrested for vaping. There's a hotline for arresting people for having a vape. It's it's absolutely nuts. So we're going to try and cover as much as we can. We'll try and do some podcasts, and I promise you, if things go right, as time goes on, this will be a much better set. I This is the first piece I'm doing, so I'm kind of winging it right now, but yes, we will get in the lighting, we'll get in the green screens, we'll get in everything else. But the main thing is, we want to get the information there. And it's not going to be all one-sided. It's not going to be, oh yes, vaping is wonderful, vaping is great, vaping is the best thing in the world, everyone should do it. It's not going to happen like that. You have to cover the good and the bad. You have to be able to discern the truth from the fiction. And that's one of the things we're hoping to do. And if all goes well, I hope you'll join us. Looking forward to it. Have a great day.